let us discuss this example so in this example we have uh, this set x x is a set of sequences of real numbers okay and they have defined d in this way x cross x to r which is defined in this way so first of all we will try to understand what is x we will try to consider what will be the elements of x and then we will think about this d okay so i am considering two elements of capital x so x is equal to i am considering x is equal to as they have mentioned here x is equal to xn so basically xn is a real sequence that means we will have sequence like this x1 x2 x3 and so on xn and so on so you know that in a sequence we will have infinite numbers so that's why we will have infinite numbers and each entry is a real number getting so this is element of capital x so we will assume one more element of capital x which will be again sequence okay sequence of real numbers so i am considering y is equal to y right so y is equal to i should it is again a sequence so it will have terms y1 y2 and so on y n and so on so is a sequence so that's why it will have infinite number of elements right so let us go further we have this two elements and uh, d is defined in this way we have to prove that it is a metric getting that means we have to prove that this d satisfies four properties so let us discuss those properties one by one actually i have started the first property here okay so let us consider this one so the first property is d of x y is always greater than or equal to zero so that means a value of d of x y cannot be negative this thing we have to prove getting so let us think about this we have this one as you can see here mod x i minus y i getting mod x i minus y i that means mod x1 minus y1 mod x2 minus y2 mod x3 minus y3 in this way we get mod x i minus y and finally they have taken its summation so as mod is there it cannot be negative so let me mention that thing here clearly okay clearly mod x i minus y i greater than or equal to 0 for all i running from 1 to infinity getting 1 2 3 and so on see mod x i minus y as i told you earlier mod x1 minus y1 cannot be negative getting since mod is there mod x2 minus y2 cannot be negative in this way we can write it for all after that i will add one in left hand side so what will happen if you add one one plus mod x i minus y i is clearly strictly greater than zero so actually let me write here this is true for all i running from one to infinity actually uh, see it is it cannot be negative but if you add one it that means hundred percent it will be positive since there is no chances of zero also since we have added one there getting so this is uh, positive and this is non-negative so if you take uh, you can take ratio so we will have implies mod x i minus y i divided by 1 plus mod x i minus y okay i have taken the ratio it will be greater than or equal to zero since denominator is positive and numerator is non-negative so that's why it is greater than or equal to zero for all i running from one to infinity getting one two three and so on see after that i will divide denominator by 2 raised to i 2 raised to i is 100 percent positive getting higher power of 2 2 4 8 16 uh, 32 in this way we'll have so it cannot be negative and i'm uh, dividing it by 2 raised to i so obviously it will be greater than or equal to 0 so let me write mod uh, x i minus y i divided by 2 raised to i in bracket 1 plus mod x i minus y i okay greater than or equal to 0 for all i running from 1 to infinity okay so this is true for all i getting so each one is non-negative so if you add these all then also it will be non-negative so that's why i'm taking summation of it again we will have so let me write summation i running from 1 to infinity mod x i minus y i divided by 2 raised to i 1 plus mod x i minus y i right it's greater than or equal to zero for okay so no need to write for all since already we have taken summation but see this is same as the definition of d of x y getting so finally we have got this is greater than or equal to zero so let me write that thing here so therefore we can write d of x y is greater than or equal to zero right since this is definition of d of x y see uh, we had taken this x and y but these are arbitrary elements of x so that's why we can write this is true for all x y belongs to capital x 
so basically we had x is the set of sequences of real numbers we took two elements and we finally prove that distance between x and y is greater than or equal to zero so in this way we can say d satisfies the first property let us go for the second property make a screenshot of it then we will go further so let us prove second property so you are familiar with the second property d of x y is equal to zero if and only if x is equal to y so for second property two elements are required i have taken two elements here which are sequences okay of real numbers see uh, consider d of x y is equal to zero so i will start with d of x y is equal to zero and we should get if and only if x is equal to y okay so let us start so d of x y is equal to zero if and only if so this is definition of d so let us consider this one here so summation i running from 1 to infinity mod x i minus y i divided by 2 raised to i in bracket 1 plus mod x i minus y i okay so this is equal to 0 so i wrote the definition of d here see as i uh, proved in a uh, first yeah first case that means we have proved d of x y is greater than or equal to 0 that means this term cannot be negative and we are adding them and then also we are getting 0 that means each of this term is 0 getting since we are adding non zero uh, non negative numbers and their sum is 0 that means each element should be 0 for example see if you add a plus b plus c is equal to 0 none of them is negative getting none of them is negative and the summation is 0 that means each of them should be 0 since if you take a is equal to 2 and b should be minus 2 to cancel out getting but my negative numbers are not allowed so the only possibility is each of them is zero so because of this reason let me remove it because of this reason each term of this summation should be zero so if and only if i should write mod xi minus yi divided by 2 raised to i in bracket 1 plus mod xi minus yi right is equal to zero for all i this is true for all i after that what will i do i will shift this denominator on that side getting so let us do that we have a space let us use if and only if so mod xi minus yi is equal to zero since this denominator if you shift it there there will be multiplication and zero into anything we will have zero and this is true for all i again so if and only if mod is zero that means the term inside the mod should be zero so that's why xi minus yi is equal to 0 for all i. Let us shift y on that side if and only if xi is equal to yi for all i. What it means xi is equal to yi for all i that means x1 is equal to y1, x2 is equal to y2, let me write here y2, x3 is equal to y3 and this is true for all xn is equal to y and this is true for all that means basically xn and x and y or xn and y and these are two different sequences getting these are two different sequences but what we are getting we are getting x1 is equal to y1 x2 is equal to y2 x3 is equal to y3 if we have two sequences where each and every term is same that means both sequences are same so i should mention here both sequences are same since each terms are same so x is equal to y so we started with d of x y is equal to 0 we got x is equal to y so we can say d satisfies its second property also make a screenshot of it then we will go for third property so let us prove the third property now so the third property we are familiar with that that is d of x y is equal to d of y so two elements are required again so that's why i consider x and y here okay both of them are sequences of real numbers see uh, i'm starting with d of x y finally we should get d of y x so let us start d of x y definition i should write here i running from 1 to infinity right mod x i minus y i divided by 2 raised to i in bracket 1 plus mod x i minus y i right okay so i wrote here see but we know that mod a minus b is same as mod b minus a inside mod if you interchange doesn't matter value will be same so that's why we can interchange so here so summation i running from 1 to infinity mod y i minus x i okay i will do the same in denominator 2 raised to i uh, 1 plus mod y i minus x i okay so what it means at a place of xi we got y at a place of y we got xi that means can we say this is d of yx yes definitely this is d of yx so d of yx getting since we have got y first and then we are getting 
xi so that's why we can say this is d of y so we started with d of xy we got d of y x so both of them are equal so we can say d satisfies its third property also let us go for the last property fourth property so let us start the fourth property so for fourth property three elements are required so that's why we taken x and y and z or you can say x y z all these are sequences that means x is equal to x1 x2 and so on xn and so on getting y is equal to y1 y2 and so on y and so on and z is equal to z1 z2 and zn and so on getting so you are familiar with that so that's why i have not written that thing there so let us start to discuss fourth property so clearly i can write one thing clearly mod xi minus zi getting so this is less than or equal to mod xi minus yi plus y mod yi minus zi this is true for all i so we are familiar with that so that's why uh, see we are already familiar with that mod satisfy that triangle inequality mod a plus b less than or equal to mod a plus mod b so that simple thing i have used here okay so if you want you can write in this way okay if you want you can write in this way so we will have the more detail information like that see mod xi minus zi which is equal to which is equal to mod xi minus yi plus yi minus zi okay so now we can write mod a plus b is less than or equal to mod a plus mod b we can take separate separate mod and we will have this is less than or equal to mod yi minus xi minus y plus mod yi minus zi this is true for all i okay the same thing i have written just i have added one more step so we get a clear cut explanation of it after that what will i do i will take reciprocal of both side let us do that i am taking reciprocal so 1 upon mod xi minus zi so you know that when you take reciprocal inequality will get change we will have this is greater than or equal to 1 upon mod xi minus yi plus mod yi minus zi this is true for all i again after that i will add one in both sides let us see what will happen i am adding one so therefore one upon mod xi minus zi plus one on that side also i will add one one upon mod xi minus yi plus mod yi minus zi plus one for all i let us cross multiply okay so i'm going to cross multiply so we'll have 1 plus mod xi minus zi divided by mod xi minus zi right greater than or equal to here also i will cross multiply 1 plus mod xi minus yi plus mod yi minus zi divided by okay so after cross multiplying the entire term we will have here and the denominator remains same that means mod xi minus yi plus mod yi minus zi this is true for all i okay so again i'm going to take reciprocal of both sides so inequality will get changed so we will have so numerator denominator will get changed mod xi minus zi divided by 1 plus mod xi minus zi inequality will get changed so we'll have this is le less than or equal to now we had greater than or equal to so mod xi minus yi plus mod yi minus zi divided by okay we will have this thing here 1 plus mod xi minus yi plus mod yi minus zi uh, for all i okay after that in the right hand side i will divide separately that means this mod upon denominator plus second mod upon denominator let me do that see i'm going to do that in right hand side only so that's why i'm writing this is equal to okay i'm continuing this side only there so mod uh, xi minus yi divided by 1 plus mod xi minus yi plus mod yi minus zi plus now this mod upon entire denominator right so mod yi minus zi divided by 1 plus mod xi minus yi plus mod yi minus zi okay so this side is same getting we are simply solving right hand side only so you know that all terms are non negative 101% so if you reduce the denominator value will get increase that means in a denominator if you drop this mod so value will get increase so this is less than or equal to mod xi minus yi divided by 1 plus mod xi minus yi plus 
and from the second term i will drop this term we are reducing the denominator so most possibly the value will get increased or equality will have okay so that's why we can write less than or equal to mod y i minus z i divided by 1 plus mod y i minus z i okay so let me write the, the thing which we have right now so therefore okay therefore let me mention here therefore we should not forget our left hand side is this one that means mod x i minus z i divided by 1 plus mod x i minus z i less than or equal to we have got less than or equal to here and basically we had this type of inequality and this is our right hand side now mod x i minus y i divided by 1 plus mod x i minus y i plus mod y i minus z i divided by 1 plus mod y i minus z i so the very important thing we have got right now now i will divide both sides by 2 raised to i why i am doing this one since i want the definition of d getting so to bringing the definition of d i am doing all these things so i am going to multiply both sides by 2 raised to i so it's a positive number getting so inequality will be same let me do that make a screenshot of it then we will go further so after multiplying both sides by 1 upon 2 raised to i i got this one okay and this is true for all other i okay so what will i do i will take summation of both sides let us see what will happen summation i running from 1 to infinity since it is true for all i mod x i minus z i divided by 2 raised to i 1 plus mod x i minus z i okay less than or equal to here also i am taking summation we are taking summation everywhere okay this is true for all, all i so inequality will be maintained 2 raised to i 1 plus mod x i minus y i plus summation i running from 1 to infinity mod y i minus z i divided by 2 raised to i 1 plus mod y i minus z i right so yes we got the definition everywhere so can you tell me this is nothing but this is nothing but d of x z since we have got x i minus z i this is nothing but yeah try to say this is nothing but d of x y and the last one is d of y z right so yeah in this way we proved d of x z is then equal to d of x y plus d of y z so we can say d satisfies all four properties so therefore we can declare d is a metric on x i'm going to write it make a screenshot of it so things I have mentioned here, D satisfies all four properties, therefore D is a matrix on X, therefore X D is a matrix. Thank you. Bye-bye.